My father walked into my office. He was very tense. His face looked flushed, and he clearly was very upset. And then he thundered, how dare you? What type of institution is this? How can you do this to my child? What type of teachers do you employ? And on and on and on. I was accosted by his emotions, by his voice, and by his whole bearing. What should I do? What did I do? That is going to be the topic of this week's video. The concept I want to share with you today and see how it's reflected in dominating and ultimately conclude with how I responded to that prior situation is called empathic listening or listening with empathy. And it's really broken down into three parts and we will go through them now. When someone comes to you and wants to share something that happened, whether it's because you're a good friend or because they're actually talking to you about something that you did, it's important that you listen. You let them talk. You don't interject. You don't try and be defensive or explain. Let them talk and let them get it all out. The second part is that you paraphrase what they're saying to you. You're angry because I did something wrong. You're angry because such a person did such a thing to you. That's terrible. And then the most critical part is that you reflect back their emotions and you try and understand what they are. And you say, I see you're really frustrated by this or this was really hurtful to you or this must have been very painful to go through. I would have been very upset had that happened to me. So not only do they understand that you heard them because you paraphrased them and you understood what they're saying, but you also get them. You're also able to, to feel their emotions. And that often is, is very powerful on many levels. Just think about it. Did it ever happen to you that you had something that was bothering you a lot and you were able to share that with somebody and they listened to you with empathy? That's what we're talking about. And I believe this is the concept that is included in the bracha of Shema Kaleinu. Obviously, there's a lot more in Shema Kaleinu and it's the, there's the more Pashup shot. But I believe if you look at the words, and when we're dying in the words of Shema Kaleinu, this concept is part of what we're asking for. First of all, we say Shema Kaleinu. Our voices, not our tfilois, not our words, our voices. And we're asking Hashem to listen to our voices. We're asking Hashem to hear not only what we're saying, but what we're feeling. Even the things that are not included in the words, but are included in our voices. We continue, and we want Hashem to, to understand our feelings. Have mercy upon us because we're in pain. Respond to our emotions and not just to our words and only our voices, but even our emotions. And then even if the answer is no, as sometimes it is, we say, please, uh, don't leave us don't let us go empty handed because we'll know let us know that you heard us let us know that you understand us let us know that you feel our pain and in that way the brach of Shema Kaleinu is very comforting no matter what the answer is no matter what we're asking for whatever we're coming to Hashem we know that Hashem has heard us has felt us and is able to empathize with us But now, what did I do in that situation? So that's what I did. I met the father straight on. I looked him in the eye and I said, you are angry because we did such and such and such. Because the teacher disappointed you. And you have a right to be disappointed. That is not okay to do that to a child. So immediately I repeated back to him what he said and he heard that I understood him. And then I also said back what he's feeling. He's being able to feel frustrated. He's able to feel angry and defensive. And then I took it one step more. And I told him, and you should be angry. A good father, a good loving parent would be angry. And I'm glad that you came to talk to me. Because now we can deal with the situation. First, I accepted the responsibility of the action to whatever extent it was true. 
But then he was also willing to listen to me and help them understand that there was a different perception going on and not exactly as the way the child related to them. But that is only because I first started off by listening to him, I empathized with him, and then I was able to accept responsibility. And I believe perhaps that's the last part of the bracha as well. We say, Ki ato And I'm coming to you, Hashem, because you are the one who's able to hear. You are the one who's able to answer the tefillahs. You're the ones who are able to take care of my problems. So therefore, I come to you. Ki ato May we all be zoiche. First, to not have any problems that we have to daam Hashem with such intensity or such emotion. But when they are, let us all be zoiche to feel Hashem is listening. And that he is indeed the Shemeya Tvilas Kolpe Berachmi. And may we be able to be consoled and comforted that no matter what the answer is, it's the right thing because Hashem knows our pain and not just what we say, but even the things that we don't say. And he knows our emotions and he loves us. And no matter what, he always hears us.